Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Kim of Kimberly Budgets here on YouTube and I am on a mission to be student debt free by 30 and make money moves in the process. Today we have a bonus video for you today. I am going to be going over my quarterly update, which includes updating you all on my savings amount for the year, my debt for the year, and my total net worth. So if you want to see that, definitely keep watching. So before we jump in, I wanted to go over the reason I want to do a quarterly update. Since I already do monthly updates, you might be wondering what is the difference between a quarterly and a monthly update. While I love doing monthly updates and I think they're really important, it's important to me to also see my progress over the long term and identify any trends in my debt payoff, in my savings, and anything in my net worth, which is so much easier to do over the span of three months rather than one month. So I'll keep doing my monthly updates every single month, but I'm also going to be adding in quarterly updates. So let's go ahead and get started. I put together this bundle of worksheets for me to work through today. So I'll have my yearly overview where I am logging all of the different um, categories that I've saved up, paid off, and my net worth. Each quarter comes with a savings tracker, a debt payoff tracker, and a net worth tracker. If you want any of these templates, you can get them on my Etsy shop, but I encourage all of you to do a quarterly update of some kind just so you can see your progress so far in 2022. So starting off with my yearly overview, I wanted to talk about my top three goals. I actually don't think I've ever gone over my main goals with you all this year. So my top three is setting aside $7,000 in my emergency fund, reducing my debt balance by 15,000, which will bring me to $57,920 in student loan debt. And then of course, maxing out my Roth IRA. So just checking off the ones that I know I've done this year already. I know I put 7,000 in emergency fund, so that is already covered. The other two goals I'm gonna be working on for the rest of this year. So starting off with my sinking funds, I actually ended up tallying up everything I have in savings, which you can see in this savings tracker here. I already went through it for the sake of time, but just looking at an overview, I started off the year with $6,456 in savings. That includes everything from emergency fund, my long-term investment accounts, uh, sinking funds, savings challenges, all of that. The end of March, which is the end of quarter one, I have $14,087 dollars in savings. As you can see, I increased my savings by $7,631 from January to the end of March 2022. Talking about the biggest places I put money towards, and I have them numbered from one through five, number one is my emergency fund. Y'all know, y'all were probably sick of me talking about my emergency fund and putting all my money towards it, but that paid off because that is the biggest area of growth this quarter. Then for my month ahead, I put $765 towards month ahead. You all know I am now one month ahead of my bills. In the third spot comes in invest the rest. I do want to start building wealth and I want to start building that earlier rather than later. So I am happy to see that even though I started invest the rest in mid-February, this is one of my top places of growth this quarter. Same goes with IRA max. I want to put $6,000 towards my Roth IRA this year, so, which is the maximum. And that comes in the fourth spot there with $575 increased this quarter. And then finally, 100 envelopes. Now you might be wondering why I'm so excited about growing my 100 envelopes challenge. And that's because that is going towards a down payment on my house. Largest places of growth are in line with my goals, whether it be building stability for myself, building wealth for myself, or investing in my future. So that is really awesome and motivating to see. And again, that's why I like doing quarterly updates because I can see when the rubber meets the road, am I aligning my money with my goals? And it seems that I am here. So going back to my yearly overview, again, started off the year with $6,456. My ending balance is $14,087, which is an increase of $7,631. Now let's jump into my least favorite section, which is debt. So if you've been watching me for a while, you know that the only debt I have is student loan debt. Before I started this journey, I paid off my car, my credit cards, and any debt I had in collections. So that is already fully taken care of. My starting balance for Great Lakes, which is my federal student loans, is $29,950. My ending balance is $27,572. And that makes up a difference of $2,000. $378. So you know, up to this point, I've been spending my time paying off my public student loans, which is with Great Lakes. 
because my loans are split up into smaller chunks, it felt motivating to, to keep tackling those. I think in the coming quarter, starting in April, I am going to start tackling my private loans instead. Mostly because with my public student loans, those have been on pause for the longest time. But all I know for sure is that I will owe my private loans no matter what. So I wanna start focusing on those in the coming quarter. But for my private loans with Common Bond, I started off with $42,758. I am ending with $42,119. And that makes up a difference of $639. My goal was to put $5,000 towards debt payment. Totaling all of that up, I ended up only putting $3,595 towards extra debt payments. That is okay. Like I showed during my savings tracker update, I was focusing a lot on my emergency fund and month ahead. So hopefully I can put some of that money towards paying off my student debt in the second quarter of 2022. But let's figure out what how much progress I made in paying off my debt. So my beginning balance of my student loan debt in 2022 was $72,708. My ending balance is just below 70,000. So I broke 70,000 y'all. And that is a difference of $3,017. And so you might be wondering why this doesn't match this, and that is because of interest. So going back to my yearly overview, you can see that my beginning balance was again $72,708, and my ending balance was $69,691, again for a drop of $3,017. I'm gonna highlight that in green because even though it is a drop, it is a drop in the right direction. All right, y'all, let's talk about net worth. So if you notice that the lighting and the angle and my lack of sleeves are different from the last clip, that is because it's a different day. I realized I messed up calculating my net worth and so we are back to correct it. So just Talking through my assets for a minute, uh, 100 envelopes, that is considered an asset because I'm going to be putting that into an investment account, so I consider that a long-term asset. Betterment is where I hold my parents' and my brother's savings. Fidelity is where I put all the invest the rest money, and I buy index funds with those. Roth IRA is self-explanatory. Coinbase is where I keep all my crypto investments. Those investments are in Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's just a very small portion. 401k comes out of my paycheck. LVS is where I'm holding my house investment fund. That is going to be really long term, so I put it in an investment fund. An emergency fund, of course, is my emergency fund that I keep in cash. So adding all of these up, I have 12,267 in long term savings. One thing to note here, I am not including my car. I do own my car outright, but I don't want to include it here. I just want to see how much progress I can make with my cash savings. As for liabilities, I have two types of student loans, federal loans and private loans. In federal loans, I have $27,572. In private loans, I have $42,119. And that totals up to $69,691. So subtracting liabilities from assets, I have a net final net worth of negative 57424 now, that is a little sad to see that my net worth is so far negative, but I think one thing I have to remember is these student loans, I already took them out. I am benefiting greatly from having a college degree. Yes, I could have gotten a better deal or taken on some scholarships, but I think it's really important for me just to move on. That's done and dusted, and the best I can do is pay it off as fast as possible, and then I can move on with my other life goals. So, moving on to my yearly overview. My starting net worth at the beginning of the year was negative 66,987. And at the end of quarter one, my ending net worth is, is negative $57,424. And that is a change, a positive change of $9,563. So that is what I'm saying about my net worth. Yes, it's negative. It's going to be negative for a while, but I am making a lot of positive change. I hope to continue making that every quarter. So I'm keeping track of my yearly progress on these trackers to kind of motivate me and give me a sense of how much I have left to do for the year. So these trackers are from different places. I don't remember where all of them are from, but I will link them in the description. So for my IRA tracker, we can see that I've filled in $500 
and so I have roughly 5,500 left to go. And I've broken it down by month. In February, I contributed $83, and in March, I contributed $494. So that is my Roth IRA. I also have a goal to at least save $15,000 in long-term savings. And so that includes everything from 100 envelopes, my brother's investment account, my parents' investing account, my house savings, my invest the rest challenge, my emergency fund, my IRA, and my 401k. And so we can see that so far this year, I've contributed 6,251 to long-term savings, which again does not include my sinking funds. And so we are coloring the progress in there. I have made a lot more progress than I expected, which is why I like doing it in this yearly overview, because I can set goals for the year, but by tracking how well I'm doing each quarter, I can see that I am slightly overpacing what I thought I would be able to put towards savings. So that's really awesome. And finally, I know this is a $20,000 savings challenge and by paying off debt, I'm doing the exact opposite of saving money, but I'm using this tracker to see if I can reach $20,000 put towards debt this year. This is a lofty goal. I know I might not reach it, but I do want to try and stretch myself, challenge myself here. So I'm tracking my minimum payments and my payments on Great Lakes, my federal student loans. I'll also add in any extra payments for a common bond. And I've broken it down here month by month. And so that adds up to just about $3,800 put towards debt this quarter. So I will continue this throughout the year and we will see how close I make it to 20,000. So that is all for today's video, y'all. Thank you all so much for watching. I want to hear in the comments how your first quarter of 2022 went. Did you meet all your goals? What goals do you have for the next quarter? I want to hear all about them in the comments. So let me know. And if you like any of the templates I was using, I will link them in the description so you can check them out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all for the next video. Bye!